this systemic, the systemic nature of aging, right? It's a, these are exosomes, which are coming from actually from a different kind of animal. Uh, Correct. And you're putting them into the blood and yet they seem to rejuvenate all the tissues, at least the ones that you checked, right? Yes. Correct. Which, which would seem to point to aging being, well, at least being systemic. I, I, I mean, I, do you think systemic? Yeah, that's 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 the real question that I that I have in my own mind. You know, clearly it's systemic. Mm -hmm. Clearly, lifespans are limited naturally. This is something that that evolution has uh, devised to make sure that uh, there's diversity and variety and and. Uh, um, progression. Evolution. Yeah, evolution. <laughs> progression. Thank you. <laughs> I know I like progression better. Progression. Um, so get rid of the old, and and the uh, the new is more evolved than, than the old. Mm -hmm. So this has been a, a wonderful technique uh, for for evolution to create us, for example. Although there are non-aging animals like planaria and hydra, etc., um, they're not they're not very interesting. Well, I I, I think planaria are very cute actually with their little crossed eyes, and <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, so systemic to most people implies that there's a central clock that controls everything. But the experiments in my hand seem to show that each cell has its own individual clock. Now, the release of exosomes could be controlled by some central um, clock. So, for mm -hmm. instance, when you when you go from uh, development into adulthood, this clock may start releasing the exosomes that uh, that change all of the cellular clocks, and then aging proceeds in a in a manner that depends on each individual cell, and and uh, is also tissue dependent. Because, for instance, uh, macrophage from one organ age at a different rate than macrophage from different organs. That's been mm. shown. Um, so, yes, I think it's systemic in, 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 in uh, its inception, but it works on the cellular level. Uh, At this, by the way, um, I've I've written about much of this in my book, the illusion of of uh, illusion of knowledge, which which comes from a great quote, which is um, that I have to paraphrase it at this point. I don't even have a copy of my own book except in <laughs> uh, in Polish, <laughs> but. Uh, the basic quote was that the major impediment to the gain of knowledge is not ignorance, but is the illusion of knowledge. Mm. And I think the aging field has been dominated by the illusion of, of, uh, of uh, aging being a, a question of uh, the dilapidation of, uh, for instance, of, uh, the analogy might be a car that mm. slowly turns into a pile of junk. Uh, no, that's, that's not how it works. It's programmed. It's it's uh, inbuilt into the cells. They follow a program. At a certain age, they stop manufacturing uh, some DNA repair enzymes at later ages. It was a paper by Stuart Chamberlain uh, that that illustrated that different at different ages, they, for instance, at the start of young adulthood, 
um, single strand brake repair is down regulated. And at the uh, beginning of old age, the transition from middle age to old age, double strand brake repair is down regulated. And I think this is this is not a coincidence. This, this is just the mechanism by which uh, evolution makes sure uh, that our bodies will kill us. <laughs> you know, that there are positive features too. I mean, positive in a negative sense, <laughs> meaning mm. that inflammation starts getting mm. more and more common as we age. And there's... Yeah. And there's no reason for that. They used to think that viruses started coming out of the DNA, et cetera. But we've shown with our studies that you re-inject these aging mice. We, we inject them. They, uh, they go back to youthful levels of inflammatory uh, cytokines. Those levels start increasing. We inject them again. They go back down again to youthful levels and actually continue to age at a normal rate until we re-inject them again, which is how we produce SEMA. Mm. On yeah. Our world's oldest sprays all the rat. One question, are you planning to get either of the papers kind of peer reviewed? Because they're both- Oh, absolutely. That's in the works. Okay, excellent. That, that would be really, that would be really good. I mean, yeah, that's in the works. I tell I tell you the truth, though. You know, when BioArchive published our paper, they had to see all of our raw data. You know, so they mm. had to check out that everything was for real. And quite honestly, I think the peer review process really, really is an impediment as much as it is a... a, a an advantage to make sure that total frauds don't uh, don't uh, you know dominate influential journals. Of course, we've seen in psychology that it's often the case that they do. Uh, but you know, the opinion of of one researcher about my research, I don't really give it. Mm. Uh, trying to think of something. <laughs> that I can say on the on the air as it were. <laughs> I don't really care what they think because I think the results speak for themselves. And if a peer reviewer disagrees, well he could he could there could be good reasons for it and there could be reasons of professional jealousy or him holding his he or she holding their own thoughts about what the cause of aging is. And they've devoted their career to promoting their own thoughts and, and having uh, somebody come and totally disprove them makes them look uh, not so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's more of a confidence thing. So, uh, yeah, it would be really nice to see them, uh, to see uh, probably the second paper peer reviewed. That would. Yes. Yeah. Would be. I also have a, a paper uh, about my hand that's in the, in the, um, current aging science. It it's, hasn't been published yet. They only publish quarterly, but they have right. their they have the abstract up online as as I'm told. Uh, I haven't looked for it yet. Kind of okay. always embarrasses me to read my own work, but so, sometimes I'm quite impressed by it. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah i will i will have a look for that and see if i can find it and uh definitely we'll look forward to it being published and we'll yeah we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it when it is um, okay excellent okay thank you richard always, thank always nice to speak to you always yeah. great to talk to you always. dr catcher okay thank you bye bye bye